I'm your host, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Let's begin. So I studied this extensively because we actually looked, we took, we did an experiment. We took a group of people that were, uh, came to our event and we did uh, all kinds of brain uh, measurements on them. And then we put HR uh, heart rate variability um, devices on them. And we asked them to trade emotions like fear or anger or resentment or impatience or frustration and, and stop feeling those feelings. And just for a few times a day, to feel gratitude and we would talk them through it just for 15 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes, two, three times a day. At the end of four days, um, we were looking to measure if there were any significant changes in their immune regulation. And we found out that the body started producing 50% more of a chemical called IgA, immunoglobulin A, the body's natural antiviral, antibacterial, natural flu shot. Yeah. And so, if when you are receiving something favorable or you just receive something enjoyable, if something wonderful just happened to you or something really amazing is happening to you, you feel grateful. So the emotional signature of gratitude is something amazing is happening to you or it just happened to you, right? So yeah, yeah. it's the ultimate state of receiving emotionally. So mm. if you can teach a person to truly practice gratitude, there'll be significant changes in the way their heart thumps, the way it beats, and what it starts to do uh, to the brain. We've studied this thousands of times. So when you start feeling grateful, your heart starts beating in a rhythm that begins to influence or inform the brain that it's safe to create. It's believing mm -hmm. in that moment that it's it's safe to be, be out of survival. And practice that enough times, the body starts to regenerate. So we mm. saw changes in immune regulation. We saw changes in gene expression. Why? Because the body's believing it's living in an environment where their dream, the person's dreams have already happened. Now, we only accept, believe, and surrender to thoughts that are equal to our emotional state. We never accept, believe, and surrender to thoughts that are not equal to our emotional state. And this is why affirmations don't work. You could say, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, oh. I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. And your body's going, no, you're not, you're miserable. So the thought never makes it past the brainstem to the body. Teach a person to change from fear and break that conditioning and practice with enough times creating the same feeling of gratitude as automatically as they did with fear, it makes mm -hmm. sense then that in a very short amount of time, you can see very significant changes in how the body regulates and how it functions. And the heart then starts to beat in this beautiful, beautiful coherent state. And, and so we started looking to see if teaching people how to do that and sustaining it, uh, if it made significant changes and, and without a doubt, um, when we accept, believe, and surrender to the thoughts that are equal to the emotional state of gratitude, that information programs the autonomic nervous system into a different destiny. Yeah. So then teach a person how to be in a state of receivership and gratitude, they can program their brain and body a lot, a lot quicker than when they're feeling fear and anger because you get the diagnosis. The moment you get the diagnosis, you, you, change, you notice a change in your internal state. You, you're changed. Yeah. And when you notice that change in your internal state, the brain freezes a frame and takes a snapshot. And that's called a long-term memory. So the doctor says, you have six months to live. You have this condition. This is what happened. And all that information is going in because it's equal to the emotion of fear. So and to get the person out of that state because that's a state of survival and you're losing energy in the body and in gratitude you're you're regenerating energy so get the person to a state of gratitude and then teach them how to program their brain and body then you start seeing changes in their autonomic nervous system meditation is not just to meditate and then and then get up and return back to the same person flipping people off on the freeway and judging your partner that's going back to the old self meditation is to prime the brain and body into a new state of being right and then maintain mm -hmm. that modified state of mind and body your entire day you got to be able to practice it with your eyes open that no condition no circumstance in your environment, no person, no thing, no craving in the body, no wrong choice. You got to be able to, to sustain that state. And if you can, mm. 
get ready because there's going to be changes in your outer world. That's the law. So mm -hmm. when we started studying people that were healing in this work, that were diagnosed, a lot of them with immune mediated conditions, Mark. Like autoimmune diseases and... Yeah, autoimmune diseases from cancer to rheumatoid to everything in between. Mm -hmm. Um, they noticed that when they started doing the meditations, they started, their well-being came back, but their blood values and their markers never changed. And it occurred to them, my God, I have a great meditation. I feel amazing. But then when I get up, I return back to the same worrying person. Now I got to step right. it up. I got to make yeah. the changes with my eyes open. And when they started doing it with their eyes open, that's when we started seeing the blood values and everything changing. So in our retreats, you can sit as it and get really good at it, but then there's four types of meditation. There's a seated, there's a standing, there's a walking, and there's a laying down. And so if you're gonna become that person you wanna become, you better be able to practice doing it with your eyes open. So we teach people, 1,000, 1,500 people on a beach or in a park, it's really cool to watch. <laughs> Everybody get that, get that, open their hearts, get in that elevated state and move into a new state of being. And then let's open our eyes. And now let's practice walking with our eyes open as that person, no different than a rehearsing for a play or rehearsing and becoming that person. And if you do it enough times and a person understands that if they could really, if, if I, how would I walk if I could heal my body in an hour? Who am I going to leave behind here? And who am I going to walk as? And a lot of people just hit it and when they do you see dramatic changes in their health because they're actually embodying the energy of their future so we practice seating sitting we practice standing and walking we practice laying down we practice it all ways because we want the person to to become that very person in one week and if they do our research shows there's dramatic dramatic biological markers that change not small amounts like thousands what are you seeing what are you seeing wow oh my god we're um, just everything from methylated dna to um changes in cytokines the changes in um immune um markers to uh, uh suppression of um uh, uh atp and cancer cells uh to um down regulating genes for alzheimer's and we just see dramatic changes uh, in, in people's biology. I'd like to simplify it for, uh, the, per, uh, for the average person, for us uh, regular people, and it's, it's really simple. I mean, your body's a protein producing machine and muscle cells make muscle proteins, they're called actin and myosin. Skin cells make skin proteins, they're called collagen and elastin. The stomach cells make stomach proteins, they're called enzymes. And every cell in your body except red blood cells makes proteins and proteins are responsible for structure, holding it together and function and physiology, how we work, it's messengers, right? But in order for a, a cell to make a protein, a gene has to be regulated. So they used to say genes create disease. Well, you know this, less than 1% of the people on the planet are born with a sure. genetic health condition. Everything else is lifestyle, it's behavior, right. it's stress. So, yeah. so, so then is it possible then that if you, if they, they say now with genes don't create disease, it's the environment that signals the gene that creates disease. Take two identical twins, uh, yeah, uh, you watch one age looks, you know, dies at 54. The other one lives to 83. They don't even look like the same person, share the same genome. Well, the environment was signaling the gene expression to make certain proteins. And the person develops a different condition because it's sure. the environment that does that. And here's the problem. But if the environment signals the gene, the outer environment of the cell is the inner environment of the body. And what, what, what is that? That's the emotions or chemical, physical, and emotional balance that we have to maintain. So if a person's just constantly living in fear, and it's even if the environment is wonderful and they're on vacation, <laughs> and they keep remembering an event or anticipating a future, and they're bringing up the emotion of anxiety and fear, it makes sense then that the person's signaling the gene outside of the outer environment because they're making the emotion in their inner environment and there's no difference. And so if, if that happens, the constant effect 
by the hormones of stress downregulate genes and create disease. And if you can turn on that stress response just by thinking about your problems, then your thoughts are literally going to make you sick. Yeah. So if your thoughts can make you sick, can your thoughts make you well? And you cannot begin to see changes in a person's health until they stop regulating the same genes the same way and they start upregulating new genes and downregulating old genes. And if they do that, they start create, producing different enzymes and, and different chemicals and different hormones and their, their body begins to scale in a different direction.